So one of the first screens you'll be presented with after onboarding will be our color system, the first tab here, colors. So I'm just going to run you through this page quickly. So as you can see, it is separated by groups. The first group here is our brand colors. So we've labeled this brand. And in here we have three colors, primary, secondary, and tertiary. Now you're free to rename these uh, as you like. Uh, this is gonna be the variable name. And then here you can see we can choose from many different formats. So for example, if I wanna use hex, I'll just choose hex here. And then I can enter any hex value or copy and paste from a style guide, for example. So I typically like to work with HSLA and we can also expand each color so we get more options as you can see. So from our primary color we can generate utility classes for text, background, border and also fill. This is useful if you're using SVGs or something similar. And then uh, you can use the utility classes on elements as you please. We also have the option to enable dark mode. So if I do this what you'll notice is we get a new color swatch here. Now what I typically like to do with this for dark mode is copy the first value which represents light mode this one and then I like to paste it into the dark mode field and then we can click on the color swatch here and just make this a little bit lighter which is typical when using dark mode themes so under that we have the option to generate transparent variants so as you can see this is going to generate nine transparent variants of our color and it's going to be prefixed with 10 20 30 etc so primary 10 is gonna represent our primary color with a 10% opacity. And here we have shades and tints. Now, if I switch off the dark mode here, let me just copy this. As you can see, shades is basically darker versions of our primary color and tints is gonna be a lighter variation of the primary color. So once I enable dark mode, we'll get two more rows, which represents the dark mode. So let me just paste that value back in here, the one that I made earlier, and everything updates in real time. We can have a minimum of three and a maximum of 10. And if I save this, you will see all of these being generated in our CSS. So right here, this is our opacity variables. This is our 10 darker shades of primary and our 10 lighter versions, our tints of primary. So let's say our brand has a different color, uh, which we can create here now. And let's say this new color is gonna be some kind of salmon. So I can call my variable salmon. And if I go to raw, for example, I can even use HTML colors salmon, for example, and that's gonna find the correct color. And then I can even go to hex and it's gonna automatically convert, as you can see, or HSLA, for example. Uh, let's say I want to create uh, utility classes for this so I can do it for text, background and border. I also want to enable dark mode and then once again what I'm going to do is copy the first value here, paste it in here and then we can just go up a little bit here to make it lighter. And then I'm going to generate some transparent variants as well as just a few shades and tints. So I only want three for each here. Save changes. All right, next what I want is I want to create some contextual uh, colors. So what I'm going to do is show you create a new color group and this is going to be called our salmon links. So first I want to create some light salmon links and I can reference any variable in here. So what I'm going to do, for example, is call this light salmon. Now we'll go to raw here. And now I can reference all of our colors, as you can see. So remember salmon, this is our original color and then the ones with L is lighter shade. So this is gonna be light salmon. So I'm gonna reference this one. And then what I'm gonna do is do dark salmon. And we'll do the same here, go to raw and then we can reference our colors. And then we can select salmon D1 and this is going to be referencing the darker shade and because on the original color here in our brand group because the dark mode is already enabled we can also go ahead and do that here as well so we'll enable dark mode for both and all we need to do is just copy this value and paste it in here it's going to reference the dark mode variation automatically. So if I disable dark mode here, you'll notice when we go down, you notice we get an error here now, no such variable or color, 
because there's nothing to reference anymore because we've just got rid of the dark mode here. So if you're going to be doing contextual colors like this, then just please make sure that on your original colors that you're referencing, the dark mode uh, needs to be activated. So now if I scroll down, you can see that's fixed automatically.